Hello and happy 2021. Uh, this happy New is, Year. Hi, welcome to What You're Reading, um, a show where librarians from around DeKalb County talk about the young adult books that we are reading during the pandemic. My name is Fran and I am from the North Lake Library. I'm Angela and I'm from the County Line Ellenwood Library. Hi, I'm Mia and I'm a Rep Educator Library. And I'm Nicole. I'm from the Harrison Crossing Library. And this week we are talking about epistolary novels. I think I'm saying that right. Um, I have a really hard time with that word, y'all. Um, but that kind of novel is a type of novel that is written uh, traditionally through letters, but now as technology has evolved, it can be written through texts, through emails, through um, any kinds of written communication like that. Um, and so we're going to talk about some of our favorite books that fall into that category. Uh, the book that I chose for this is called Illuminate. It is by Jay Kristoff and Amy Kaufman. It is the first in a trilogy, I believe. Um, and I chose this one because it's just a really, really cool book. Um, the basic plot line, I believe that their names are Katie and Ezra. Uh, they wake up in the morning. Katie's planning on breaking up with her boyfriend, Ezra. She thinks that's gonna be the hardest thing that she's going to have to do all day. But then their planet is invaded, is invaded and they have to evacuate onto a spaceship. And then this entire thing is told through like interviews and emails and all sorts of different ephemera. It's just very cool. Um, I took some images from the internet of what some of a sample page and this might look like. There's a lot of things that are redacted because they are government uh, documents. If you are concerned about a book with cursing, um, anytime there is a curse, it is also redacted, although you can kind of fill in the blanks. Um, so it's not like your brain knows what is supposed to be there. Um, it's like when they bleep it on TV. Um, you can see a lot of things are listed as classified there. This is like an example of what a page spread might look like. Um, some of them are just maps to give you a better idea of what it would look like. Here's one page with just a bunch of things that are being yelled in the spaceship at that moment. But most pages look something like this. So this is like a transcript of an interview um, that was taken place. The thing that I really love about this is for those of us who've got like, um, you know, a little bit of like ADHD, those of us who can watch like 12 episodes of a TV show, but can't sit down for like a two hour movie, you know, we kind of have to have a lot of things going on at once. This is really cool because you turn the page and you might be dealing with something completely different. It makes the book go really fast. Also, if for school you have to have a book that is a certain number of pages, this can work for that. It's like this thick, but it doesn't take that long to read because a lot of it is just like pictures and maps and like cool stuff like that. So um, I would really recommend this despite the length for reluctant readers. Um, it could really give you that sense of accomplishment. Like I just read this giant book, but it's a lot of fun. It's really funny too. Um, and I haven't read the other two books in the series yet, but they are on my to read list for sure. Cool. Sold me on it. Good. Okay. So the book I chose was Dear Rachel Maddow by Adrian Kistner. And, um, it is written in, well, not the whole entire book, but the majority of it is written in emails. And you'll see the little email thing at the top and it'll say sent folder or draft folder or something like that. And essentially the main character's brand, it starts off because she had a writing assignment to do to make up for trying to catch up on her grades or whatever. And it was to write to a famous person whatever you wanted to write to, but you had to turn it into your teacher. She did that. And, you know, like all teachers do with their red pen, <laughs> he went through it, went through it, and it, it frustrated her. She writes another one, and she actually sends it to Rachel Maddow. She chose Rachel Maddow because her parents hate Rachel Maddow. So she <laughs> is like, I'm just giving them a finger this kind of way. This, you know, what teens do. And for no other reason. Like, you know, she didn't really know much about her. And she gets a response back and it just kind of gives her a high. And 
but because she's not a total jerk, she doesn't write to her again, but she, she does, she puts them in her draft folder in her email. So all her thoughts, all her emotions are going into these draft folders. And as the book progress, you realize that she's lost her brother um, due to drugs and um, she's broken up with her girlfriend and all these things and emotions that are happening in these, the teen angst come out in all of her letters, her emails. And then you get a little bit of the, it breaks up with a little bit of letters to other people. She gets the, the strength to write to her father after Salome's like, you know, why didn't you want me? You know, all of a sudden, all her feelings, but she actually sends them. And so I don't want to give away too much more of the book, but it's really good. It's in, it's um, intense in, in some places to me. I'm not sure if it's the best book to start 2021 off because it's not a happy, uplifting book in a lot of places, but there is a little bit of, um, of fun to it and, and everything, but it really grabbed me at the very beginning. You know, you, you, it's one of those that you can read really fast and really quickly because they're emails. They're not, each page is a paragraph, maybe two paragraphs long, if that. And so you could kind of like just clip through them and you're just going before you know it, you've got half the book written, read. So, um, but I, I enjoyed it and um, yeah, so it was a good one. I don't know. Maybe read something else uplifting first. Do <laughs> do Fran's book first, then this book. I mean, people <laughs> cry in my book. Maybe <laughs> one of y'all have something that's a better. Okay. <laughs> Nicole's coming up with it. Nicole's got it. Mine's in between. Okay. Mine is, I know, Book of a Thousand Days. Um, it's by Shannon Hale, who I love. And it's told in a diary format. So she's got a journal or a diary that she writes in every day. Um, it turns out it was actually based on a fairy tale that I had not ever heard of called Maid Maline. Um, it was really good. And sometimes she even does little sketches. Aww. I know it's really good. And it starts out at the beginning where she's a maid and she is locked in a tower for seven years with her. She's a maiden waiting um, for, with this um, trentry lady woman. Um, and it talks about like, goes more into why they're locked in the tower and then they escape and then it's what happens after that. So it's, she starts back on to day one. So it, it, it goes over almost a thousand days, um, but in two sort of separate parts. It's really, really good. It's got that fairy tale flavor. Um, so it is a good book and the fact that it transports you away. Um, I really enjoyed it. If you don't know Shannon Hale, she does well everything. It's just, just a really good, <laughs> like too many things to say but she just writes really really well and this one it's nice it's available for contact free pickup um the audio is on hoopla so there's um different ways to read it too i think it would probably be a really fun audio because it's all told from her perspective the main character yeah well speaking of audio <laughs> i i brought in 2021 with an audio book called from Twinkle with Love. And this is by uh, Saha uh, Minin, Miron. Um, I'm not exactly sure how to pronounce her last name, but it is about a uh, girl in high school named Twinkle who is an aspiring filmmaker. And she wants to dismantle the patriarchy. She wants to show the world that um, BIPOC women can, you know, tell stories, can, you know, make these great films, and she has a YouTube channel. So she has been making films for her whole life, and she gets together with this guy named Sahil, who she has a crush on his brother, Neil, and um, she and Sahil get together to make a uh, movie, Dracula, but from the female point of view so all of the main characters are women and it's kind of like her coming to terms with being um in her mind lesser than like the other popular kids uh kind of like fighting back against the patriarchy like I said there's there's a lot of <laughs> there's a lot of that in there and um it's a love story 
and I don't want to give away any more because I'm afraid I'm going to ruin the love story part of it. But if you like, you know, books by Maureen Gu, or if you like uh, To All the Boys I've Loved Before, or if, or if you've even read her other book, um, When Dimple Met Rishi, this is totally and completely a great way to start 2021 reading a, a book that's about love, but it's also about finding yourself and, you know, coming to terms with what is important now may not necessarily be important later in life. And it is available as a ebook, e audiobook, a physical book, a physical audiobook CD. We have them all, and they're all available right now for a contact free pickup. So, yeah. Nicole came and saved us. She <laughs> has the first 2021 read. Um, Maybe, maybe Mia's probably not mine or uh, Angela's until you get a couple other happy books under your belt and then you can slot those in. Um, we hope that the beginning of your year has been wonderful and uh, we will be back in two weeks with more book recommendations and we'll see you then. Bye. Bye. Happy New Year. Happy New Year.